Oh my gosh, here we go. We got, we got Big Swole back on the show here, guys. And for it to be back on the show to you guys is uh, new to your ears uh, because we tried to record an episode back in October. I think it was October. Mm. Um, and let's just say it, shit hit the fan. Um, I had Nora with me who was like screaming into the microphone and we were both just being like, patient trying to make it happen like just plowing forward we're gonna do this and then like it was just trashed there was no <laughs> way there was no way so i'm so happy to have you back on um a lot has happened since yeah. you were on how are you what's going on i'm good i am finally at peace you know like i just have that overwhelming feeling of just I'm exhaling, yeah. Yeah, as they used to yeah. say back in the '90s. I'm, I'm exhaling and finally being just me, and it's it's been a wonderful experience. Like I love it. What has that experience been like for you? I mean, I know I had a similar feeling of like I feel like there was different moments of that mm. exhale of like, okay, this decision has been made to move forward in this direction, but then it's like there can always be like a little bit of uncertainty with what the next thing's going to be that, I mean, for me can make me become very tense again immediately um, to, to, yeah, then just finding those other moments to exhale. So what has that process been like for you? It was rough. Like, I'm not going to, of course, sugarcoat it. Like, oh, it was great. It was amazing. Like the final product is amazing, but going through the fire hurt like hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it was a lot of okay, inward shadow work, like what, Ooh. what are you, what am I blaming you for? You know, like, yeah. okay, and what I need to stop blaming myself for and just giving up that control. Cause I used to be a type of person where I love to have just control, you know, like I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, this is the way it should be. Uh, I get a little bit of my mom's A type personality sprinkled on onto me, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, it was, it was heartbreaking. It was sad. It was uplifting. Uh, it was difficult finding that okay what do you want to do next yeah you know like what do you want to do and diving into that and then realizing I'm not I'm not myself I don't feel like myself anymore what I lost myself along what the way a mind somewhere. that is huh? <laughs> yeah oh my like Man, what an listen. unexpected thing to happen to like and everyone goes through that at some point or another where you have to like mm -hmm. really check yourself look yourself in the mirror and be like what do I want who am I? How do I get back to being that chick that was yeah. like, that was all of these things that made me great that now I feel like I don't have control of right now. Mm -hmm. I feel that way a lot anyways. Yes, it was, it was a lot of stress. Yeah. And uh, stress is just no bueno for my body. Like it, it immediately yeah. goes completely downhill uh, if there's any kind of big stress around. And so I just had to find other ways to like cope and other ways to put like my energy into like getting my routines down, like my morning routine. Okay, this is what I like to do. This is what I enjoy having like family Fridays and girl Mondays with my daughter and stuff like that. Just, you know, me days, having a plan. Like I said, that, that little control part, like it was easier <laughs> yeah. to follow a plan. <laughs> oh my God. I know it's really hard. Like that's the one thing. And like, you know, I've been gone from WWE coming up on almost two years it'll be two years in august so a little bit of time away but like that's the thing i still struggle with is like my schedule what have i booked here what is happening here like i am mm -hmm. rotten at that oh my god are you <laughs> are you good at that I, i'm good if it's written down or like if it's in a note or something like that like if it's just like i'm trusting all that to be up here <laughs> <laughs> not when I have all this to take care of. Like, I I'm, I'm like out of sight, out of mind. But that's why I have like bulletin boards, I have dry erase boards around the house. Yeah. I have to make sure I remember or else I'm like, what, what do I have to do today? Like today, I thought today was Thursday. I was yeah. prepared to go to training and everything. And I was like, no, today's Wednesday. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know it's so hard to like, stay on top of shit and the weeks go by so fast I don't know if that's just they, like mom oh, life does that or like they do holy shit time just flies okay so mm -hmm. during this time that you've had for yourself what are some things that you've like discovered about yourself or like really realized are like the things that you want that are propelling you forward um 
my biggest one was uh, just, I guess, uh, I things that I want, I want, I want them so badly, but they're not, you know, in my path. They're not, you know, mine by divine right. Like, <laughs> it was hard letting go of things that wasn't for me, that wasn't serving me, but I still wanted them around because like, you know, if, if it was just people or the things that I was doing, like my love for wrestling kind of changed in between mm -hmm. this whole entire thing. And I was like, you know what? I don't feel it like I used to. Where is it? Do I want it back? That was such a hard question yeah. for me. Like, do you want that back? Think about the stress and everything. I've been more sick time, you know, when I was wrestling at, than ever. <laughs> yeah. So it was just, it was, it was hard. Like a lot of, a lot of crying It's my biggest lesson was being okay with not being okay and being okay with giving up something. Yeah. You know, Cause I'm just so used to, okay, this has to be perfect. This type of way, uh, you, you know, I'm used to getting not necessarily what I want, but I expect things in my life. Mm -hmm. And when things don't go out the way I planned, it was just hard to like, let go. Yeah. 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 No, I very, know. very it's, hard to let go. It's really hard. Yeah. Like being in the driver's seat and being in control, but then like the shit that you just simply can't control. It's infuriating when you're like, wait, I want this in my path. How do I keep these things right. going? And then you're like, wait, maybe, maybe I'm fighting right. this too hard or whatever. Like I heard this quote and it completely changed my host's perspective. It was like, you may be good, but God may want better. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what, what I'm holding on to is, is good for me. It's great. I was like, but if I saw what was next, I wouldn't be holding on so hard with my sure. whole entire life. You know, that's yeah. what's causing issues in, you know, in my life and probably in other people's lives. You're just holding on to things because it's comfortable. What do you want to be next? What are the things that you are writing on these dry erase boards and the things <laughs> that you are manifesting? Like as you've gone through this shift and either reestablishing your love with pro wrestling or finding other things to fill that, what, what does that all look mm -hmm. like for you? And all, honestly, the goal is still the same because I always just wanted to use whatever I'm doing to touch somebody, to reach somebody, to tell my story and everything like that. So now it's more so like I'm working on my book, like I, I finally have like my editor and everything. And like my, my brother, he owns, like he's a part of a publishing company. So I'm putting everything into words about everything I've went through because I feel like it can help somebody along the way. Sure. Then I've done my job. Um, also just using my voice, like I'm going out and doing motivational speaking and stuff and just, like I said, just using whatever I have to to reach people. That's all I want to do with my life. It's just to help other people smile. <laughs> How does someone become a motivational speaker? Like, who do you reach out to, to be like, Hey, this is a thing that mm -hmm. I'm going to be good at, or a thing that I'm interested in. Is somebody coming to you and offering this up? Like, how does that work? Well, sometimes when people come to me, like, Oh, we want to set you up with going to this university or something like that. Or I have uh, teachers, past teachers, and also friends who became teachers. Uh, I come in for the great American teach-in you know, just a little <laughs> razzle dazzle in between the lawyers and the doctors of the world. <laughs> like, oh, Let's get some wrestling. Yeah. Right. <laughs> wrestler is here. <laughs> it tells you like a TI is, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh my so, yeah, gosh. Like, it's, it's just like word of mouth, a lot of networking. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I do like podcasts, like to my call in show and everything. And yeah. I have people that listen to that. And then they're like, hey, you would be great at coming to my school and talking to these kids because somebody's somebody's got to talk to these children <laughs> you sure. know like I had so many great influences in my life and I just wish that for everybody to be able yeah. to have that so you can have that confidence so you can have that like that wherewithal to keep it going who, who were some of the influences that you had I mean obviously you are a very strong uh bold woman how did mm -hmm. you become this woman my mama, ooh, my mama, mm -hmm. <laughs> Miss, Miss Mary Ann, <laughs> she <laughs> taught me everything, everything I need to know, um, I and mean, my dad taught me some things, my biological dad as, as well, um, it's just my, my parents in general, they taught yeah. me a lot, my, uh, I guess people call them bonus dads, stepdads, I just call them dad, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but mm -hmm. he's also a pastor, like other people in my family are, so it was easy to just latch on to the knowledge they were willing to give and the tutelage that they were willing like 
to bestow upon me and sit me down and like, hey, this is how this works. Or, hey, yeah. this is what worked for me. Uh, just my mom used to say like, hey, you better listen to me because I love you. This world don't love you. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> Good point, mom. <laughs> right. It's like you can use like that world. They don't, that world's going to teach you some things. And I'd rather you learn the lessons now, you know, while you have a covering, while you have a protection than when you get out there and you're necessarily on your own. Yeah. So it yeah. was just easy to soak it up because I saw what my mom went through. I saw what my parents went through and I know I didn't want that for me. And my mom always told me that she wanted better for me. What kind of things did they go through? What kind of things like, did you see that you knew that, that you wanted to change uh, in, in your life, your like adult life? My mom was a complete hustler. Like she would work and work to make things like ends meet for us. And for me to have like the shoes that I wanted and stuff like that. And she worked long hours, sometimes double job, like working at the bus driving and then at night going to be like a clerk. So like she was missing like all my games, and everything, but there was food on the table. You know, uh, she never had anybody to tell her you can do it. Like my, yeah. my grandmother wasn't necessarily the most supportive because she had all these other things going on in her life. And my mom didn't get that boost. Yeah. And so like, and neither did my dad. So they just kind of settled into different jobs. We ended up working for them. Mm -hmm. But uh, my mom told me I could be anything and do anything and not to settle. Just, you know, you can make things work for yourself without, you know, settling. Moms are the best, um, are. obviously. <laughs> Mo moms are great. Being a mom is great. Um, let's talk mom life here for a second. Cause mm. I have been having one of those damn days. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like, it's, you know, I feel like today was one of those days where like I piled too much shit on my plate. I had like mm -hmm. meeting, interview, meeting, interview, this phone call, this thing. And all the while it's like, John's on the road today. So I've got like the baby on my hip. Uh, at one point I, I thought she had like spilled water on her diaper. Cause she was like, her big thing is drinking water out of a, a water bottle right now. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, Oh my <laughs> God, she like pooped. And I didn't realize. So like, oh, I feel, know. I feel horrible about this. Then like the dog knocked her over at one point. I'm like, Oh, oh. My God. <laughs> I just felt like I was like failing as a mom. I'm like, I've done too much today. I didn't mm -hmm. get to just like fully give her all the attention that she needed. Oh my. And it's just like those days when you really just try to do it all. And mm -hmm. you're like, did I do anything well today? I have <laughs> no idea. But I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. well intentioned. Obviously I'm trying to do the best that I can with everything with like, you don't want to like not come through on like business things that you have set up. You've got work and this things to do. But then, yeah, I mean, it's also just taking the time. I literally, like, as I finished my last thing, I was like, I am clearing my schedule for a minute. I am not taking on anything else new for a second because I need to slow down. There's too much right. happening. Um, have you ever had a day like that? Or, like, g give me a little mom talk here. It, yes, I, I've had plenty of days like that, especially oh. if it's a cook day. <sighs> that's, <laughs> I feel like that's the most stressful day for me. It's because I'm like, okay, I have to get up early. All right, I have to take, make sure AJ gets to school on time. I have to make sure her hair is done in the morning. Like she likes the lollygag. So like, that's an issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it's, it all starts with like 6 a.m. His alarm goes off. Now, usually my alarm goes off too, but if it's a school day, I'm like, no, I'm getting that extra sleep. But his yeah. alarm is just so loud. Like it's just the most annoying sound in the world. That is I'm like, John hey. too. It makes me <gasps> like irate. Makes me yeah, livid. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it scares me half to death. Every time I wake up, I'm like, oh, geez, it's like, like apocalypse is starting or something. Like, oh my God. Oh it's my God. I'm like insane. Gabriel's horn. Oh my like, dude. <laughs> Like this, it, it wasn't this bad in the military. I can, I can do that all day now. I'm like, compared to this. <laughs> so oh my God. John's is like this jingle. It's not even that it's loud. It just like goes off and then he snoozes and then it goes off. And I'm like, it's shut off your alarm. Man, man. 10 Whew. snoozes later, oh my God. finally gets up and he's like, I don't want to do this. I'm like, oh, I, I don't want to be up right now. <laughs> Uh, but, <laughs> these guys but, yeah that, that that pretty much starts my day and then after AJ goes like to school like it gets a little bit easier until I get to the dogs 
and we just got a new dog so we just got Sophia Sophie and she's like a mini Irish doodle so oh. yeah right <laughs> she's cute and red wait and what's cuddly. an Irish doodle like an it's Irish an, wolfhound it's an Irish setter okay I was like that mix. thing's gonna be huge an Irish setter okay that's yeah, yeah. better I'm so like if it's an Irish be wolfhound you're gonna have a pony on your hands good mm -mm, okay no thank you Theo is my pony I'll take him <laughs> yeah. over any big dogs any day <laughs> so I go and get the doggies and you know they're just they're too hype for me in the morning I'm not mm -hmm. necessarily a morning person I need to get my tea I need to do something because you know I'm like intermediate fasting so I, I can't Ooh. eat until 12 and I'm like oh, Jesus take you know take the wheel yeah. type stuff but um it's always like somebody wants something type of thing and it's yeah. always on cook days where he's just like I need lunch money I forgot to bring lunch money so I have to go back to the school and do that and mm -hmm. of course I want some time to myself after I work out and <laughs> which is like 30 minutes because then by that time I got to go get her from school uh -huh. <laughs> and then I'm like okay let's have a little moment with you okay okay all right we're breathing all right now Cedric wants attention okay now Cedric wants attention okay this is great you've slept the rest all the rest of the day after your workout and your rehab so okay <laughs> now you get attention all right it's it's damn near seven o'clock yes I gotta start dinner the dinner takes two hours no matter what I'm cooking it takes two <sighs> hours I don't mm. care what those Pinterest girls say on <laughs> it's 30 <laughs> minutes or less is a lie unless you, you, you gotta get an air fryer do you have an air fryer I, I do have an air fryer, but I'm like, I'm so old school. I'm like, look, these, these things that I eat, I, I require an oven. I just can't be frying things all willy nilly. <laughs> I am, so I normally am totally on board with you with that. Where like, I want to be in there. I want to enjoy cooking. I want to like give the food the proper love and attention that it so deserves. But when I'm in a pinch, I'm like those chicken, I'll, I buy like just like the thin little like cut up chicken breasts season mm -hmm. them up in the air fryer 10 12 minutes you're done and on a busy day like that i'll take it i'll take it i mean listen do like I have, i've got the cookbook and uh i can really get some shit done in the kitchen but i can also really cut some corners if i need to yeah I, I'm, I'm big on cutting corners i'm big on getting like a <laughs> croissant or a puff pastry i'm like i'm not making this from scratch i'm just you know hmm. oh, no, eliminate agreed. the steps I'm like, I'm uh, not agreed. Yeah, I actually made <laughs> some muffins today that just as like a thing that I was like, let me do a thing with Nora in the kitchen so she mm. can like watch me doing a thing, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they, they taste good, but they um they did not look Pinteresty to say the mm. least. I baking, understand. Baking's a real bitch, you know? Yeah, I understand. We we made some pizzas yesterday, mm. AJ and I, and uh they were square pizzas. Because oh. I was not about the, I was like, I'm not going to make this into a circle. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> like it wasn't, it, yeah, it, it wasn't Pinterest worthy, but hey, it was, it was good. It was Gets really, really done. good. Like after this, I, I made some, some strawberry pop tarts because mm. I just refused to eat the regular pop tarts. I know it's bad for my stomach and my lining. I'm like, I'm not doing it. So I'm like looking forward to those after this conversation. I'm These are homemade mom. pop tarts? homemade pop tarts girl talk mm -hmm. to me i've yes. been dying to do that that has been on like my list as i'm like venturing out kind of spreading my wings a little bit in the baking mm -hmm. world that's on my list of things to do because they look yes. delicious obviously right. better than just like a packaged pop tart they'd say mm -hmm. no shade but maybe they're thicker it's better and it's you know it's vegan mm. so you have, like the certain dietary restrictions are you vegan no, no, but for my body, I choose to like to lean that way. So I don't, yeah. you know, do any cow products or anything like that. You know, I'd stay away from dairy and I try to limit like my meat intake. Like if yeah. I do decide to eat it, I'm like, okay. But then halfway through, I'm like, I don't want this. <laughs> so I have yeah. to be very small portions of meat, you know, but yeah. seafood I can, I can eat all day. <laughs> yes. You know what? I prefer seafood anyways. I love me some seafood. Yeah, I'm a seafood um, connoisseur. So how, wait, when did you get diagnosed with Crohn's? uh april 3rd 2008 and what happened? second birthday <laughs> oh, oh well, geez your second yeah. birthday yeah my second birthday so my parents call it um uh, so I, I remember like it was yesterday i was just going to see my doctor 
And I remember going to use the bathroom and nothing but blood came out of my, my orifices. So uh, <laughs> the smart thing to do was to go home. And that's what I did <laughs> instead of going back into the doctor's office. I was like, I just got to lay down. Like I was oh delirious and gosh. delusional. It was, it was past the point where I wasn't thinking clearly at all. So my friend Sarah took me back home and my dad looked at me and he's like, you look like death. And of course, him being a pastor, I was like, wait a minute now. <laughs> yeah right hold on right I was like hold on so my mom was like all right I'll give you a choice you can stay here and take a nap or I could take you to the hospital and the choice I was really voluntold to go so I ended up in the back of my mom's car I flatlined on the way to the hospital right so that's why it's my second birthday so when I when I walked back up I remember being in the hospital uh, I remember them getting out me out of the wheelchair and uh, doing a CAT scan uh, and they were like, okay, so your daughter's intestines are eating each other. So my small intestines was swallowing my large intestines. And he was like, in, thir in 30 minutes or less, it's like, it, it's gonna burst. Your daughter will become septic and there's nothing we can do. She's gonna die right here. <laughs> and <laughs> that was my fair too. I was like, huh? <laughs> like, Holy like, shit, what, 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 do what you a mean? betrayal of your body. Huh? a complete betrayal and this is right before no this is right right before my 19th birthday and so <laughs> I of course I'm like well I guess we're doing this yeah we're doing this they put me to sleep I wake up and there's tubes everywhere there's tubes coming out of my nose there's tubes coming out of my lady and <laughs> and I was just like we love a good catheter right we love a good catheter um and I was like what has happened doctor came in and he said, oh, we will remove about a foot and a half of your intestines. Uh, you have Crohn's disease. And my sister was there, there and she was a nurse and she's a nurse. And she said, that's usually only in babies. She's like, usually, yes. But it seems as though your body was laying dormant. Your Crohn's was laying dormant for the past 18 years. And I'm like yes. shoveling down McDonald's and beef and all that other stuff that's just apparently bad. And it was like a big earth shattering kaboom. <laughs> <laughs> at the at the end so they ended up taking out a foot and a half and um I ended up becoming like getting c diff like abscesses all throughout like one day this is like one day they were like oh now you have c diff so nobody could come and see me without like wait so hazmat. what is c diff it's like a um it's like a viral infection almost it's like bad the worst bacteria you can ever have like e coli on steroids oh, so fuck. like c diff uh, it's a uh, it's like they, they, they find it through like, you know, like bowel movements and stuff like that or whatever. Yeah. So um, when they find out it's so contagious that anybody who even like breathes in the air will automatically get it. And it could tarnish your whole like GI tract. It's like eats away. So <laughs> I was sitting there and I was like, so I almost died. Well, also, I guess I did die for a couple seconds, a couple minutes or whatever. And then I wake up and I'm like, oh, you're about to die again. And I'm like, okay, it was, it was a hell of a day. Just and dodging like, oh, bullets left, right, and center, C -diff. shit. Right. And then to the icing, the cherry on top was that the catheter made me swell up. And then I found out I was allergic to latex. And then that's when my mom knew that I was still a good girl. Because <laughs> oh. that would have been the most horrifying experience of my life, probably, uh, to have that happen. <laughs> oh, my God. That's horrifying. Right. Yeah. My mom was like, it's like a baseball. <laughs> like, I'm like. <laughs> there's something wrong down there mom it's like oh my god it, yeah it wow was the most interesting day of my life <laughs> I have like a very minor latex allergy which is the only way I know about it is from eyelash glue that it would like mm. fuck up yeah. my eyelids but like I couldn't imagine that happening to my vision right it was Holy. yeah <laughs> yikes yeah. Okay, so yeah. what, what happens after the C. diff? Like, how did they, what, like, what they do to fix you? A lot of antibiotics. Um, they pretty much had to put me on TPN because I wasn't taking uh, food well. Yeah. So I had to have a pick line in my arm straight to my heart because the IVs were all blowing out. Like the one in my neck swelled up to like a, another base. Like it was like a grapefruit actually. Just more uh, from the latex? So, right, well, no, this was just because my body was rejecting every oh. needle. So they had to put me on TPN and I had to be fed that way for about two weeks. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> uh, until everything just kind of cleared. And then uh, it was just a lot of antibiotics, a lot of gastroenterologists coming in and like, okay, you're on this now, you're on this now. Uh, I was taking about, I was about 17, yeah, 15 to 17 pills a day uh, just to combat oh. the Crohn's disease because it was just, the level was so high. So what exactly is Crohn's disease? I mean, I hear about it. I have like an idea of what it is and what it does to mm -hmm. your body, but what is like the actual like diagnosis of Crohn's? What does that mean? Crohn's is basically like your, the Crohn's cell in a sense, the bacteria kind of mimics the uh, red blood cells in a sense. So my white blood cells end up killing everything. Uh -huh. So I have to constantly replenish. Uh, so, and then also it causes almost like a decay of your GI tract. Mm. So it can ruin the lining of your intestines. Uh, it causes you to not be able to digest food properly and uh, like different types of food. Like you have to cancel out a lot of different things because it's just caused your intestines and your whole GI tract to become almost soft. Like we know something's paper thin, like, oh, it, you know, yeah. it can really, you know, it deteriorates almost in a yeah. sense. It causes the deterioration of your whole GI tract. It, oh, um, it swells in your, it makes your joints swell. I found out that was another uh, <laughs> symptom of it is that every joint in your body could just swell up at any, at any moment, at any time. Like so how intense. does that affect you as a wrestler? I know you've taken time off before mm -hmm. due to dealing uh, with Crohn's, but I mean, on like a day-to-day -day, uh, basis for you, I mean, when you're on the road, you're traveling, you're taking bumps, all of those things, how does that affect you? Uh, it causes a lot of, like I would say it causes damage to, mm -hmm. to my body. Um, obviously I love it because I continue to keep doing it because I won't take no for an answer, but it, uh, I can tell you that it's, all the bumps are not good for the body. It's a lot like the traveling and especially on like car planes. That's why I carry like a, a pillow with me just to make it a little bit more comfortable for myself. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's rough. Like, especially when you're not at home and you don't have the certain foods that are around that you like to eat, or, you know, that are tolerant to your body. Yeah. Like it gets a little difficult, but uh, with proper planning, like I do a, a lot of printing beforehand and making sure I got all like my products and my medicine and stuff like that, just to uh, kind of like if any flare ups come up, I'm just yeah. prepared. Oh my God. That's yeah. gnarly. That, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry that you deal with that. And, uh, but damn kudos to you that you were just like, <laughs> F it. I'm still doing my thing. I'm not being derailed. Right. Keep yeah. Going. Like, yeah. It's just, I guess taking no for an answer is like part of my, my thing. Uh, like <laughs> my dad says that uh, we're a part of the Balanta tribe and they're the people that resist. In a mm. sense, they've always okay. been resistful. So they, uh, the colonization did not happen anywhere near, near them. They just like up and left. They up and leave. They're like, ah, I'm not doing this. I'm <laughs> fighting. And then they're like, all right, now I'm gone. I've wrecked shit and I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. That's, right. This is not serving me anymore. Thank you exactly. so much. Exactly. Like I'm gone. So like when the doctor's telling me, oh, you'll never be in sports again. Uh, because I had to, of course, learn how to walk over again for the second time in my life after that first surgery. And then they told me I wouldn't have kids. So I was like, eh, whatever. Defying all odds. Right, I was like, I'm, I've okay, been through wait. worse. When did you have to learn how to rewalk the first time? I was in ninth grade and I was a goalie. And uh, <laughs> this girl didn't like the fact that I was just like blocking all of her shots or whatever. And, uh, he came into pretty much my, my goalie post. And, uh, I remember I got up, I caught the, I caught the ball and I need her in the face, like right in the chin, just, shoom. and she had it out for me the rest of the game and ended up pushing me into the goal post. So she, when she pushed me in the goal post, I wrapped around it and my foot got caught in the net. So I was hanging upside down. The next morning I woke up paralyzed from the neck down. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. What did it you was like, hit? Like, like what happened? Um, I can't remember exactly what part the doctor said that I hit, but they were saying that it was a hard enough like impact. And of course I sat down for like a, a couple of minutes and I was right back in the game because I felt fine yeah. because I kept going. The doctor said that it something, I guess must've 
something happened either way like I just couldn't I couldn't move and it was about a week that I was just stuck and I was bedridden and the doctor was like if this happens again it will be permanent it's like you cannot play soccer ever again and it just like broke my heart so you said <laughs> okay I'm gonna go be a professional wrestler that's right I that's yeah right. I, <laughs> yeah <laughs> How did you come to that conclusion? Okay, so like, I'm, yeah, I mean, hey, the heart wants what the heart wants, right? What kind of like, what kind of conversations were you having with your family? Were you having with yourself to like, to want to pursue this other avenue given the things that you've been through? Oh man. Well, first I had a conversation with Cedric because it was something that I I wanted to do when I was little and it was on my list of things to do. Because like I said, my mom said I could be anything. So I wrote a list. (laughs) <laughs> and the last thing on the list was wrestler and um at the time I was dating you know my now husband Cedric so I was like I want to do this and he kind of grilled me and I was just like he's like look if you're going to do this you're going to be a wrestler not a female wrestler but just a wrestler like I'm going to hit you the exact same you know these these bumps and these boards don't care if you're female or male, like they're going to mm-hmm. hurt regardless. Yeah, they don't, they don't discriminate, so, bring it right, on. They don't, they do not discriminate at all. Um, <laughs> my parents was a harder sell. Definitely my, my mom's has seen everything that I've gone through. So she just still cannot fathom like why I'm still like, doing it. She yeah. thinks it's just, she's like, no, this is just not for you. She's like, I know you're defiant to the end. She's like, but <laughs> She's still like, oh, I support you, but it's also like, I want you to take care of yourself first and foremost. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course. I mean, that's every parent. What would, okay. So if this was AJ in your situation, Mm. roles are reversed. What would your advice be to her? Um, my advice would be to her that, Hey, this is your life to live. I can only give you like my little tidbit of, hey, make sure you take time to relax. Make sure you take time to heal your body, you know, properly. Yeah. And then, hey, if you, you do it, go for it, you know, you yeah. do everything. Let's talk a little Cedric here. When did you guys, how long have you guys been together? Oh, Lord have mercy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, look, about 10 years. Hell yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I, I, listen, uh, I know it's crazy time flies John right. and I were, jo, we just had our fifth wedding anniversary but this fall will be nine years and it's like whoa dude what how'd that happen yeah we've we've been at it for 10 years um yeah I say 10 years collectively I'm not counting the time we had to off but <laughs> that's it's fine champ, champ, yeah. yeah that's fine but uh, yeah, about about ten years. Um, married for almost four. Uh, so yeah, it'd be four in June. Oh, so like almost the same as us, like in and around yeah. that same same little window. How did you guys get together? What was that first date like? What was the what was this love struck <laughs> moment that happened between you two? Well, I saw him at a pro wrestling show called Pro Wrestling Evo in Charlotte, North Carolina. It was a excuse me, Concord, North Carolina. Uh, my friend was like, hey, can you drive me to my show? I just, I need to, you know, my friend Rob is like, I just need help. Da, 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 da. And I was his boss at the time. I was working at GameStop. I was like, all right, fine. I'll take you to your show. You know, give me gas money. It's whatever. I'm thinking it's 30 minutes away. That mug was three hours and like 10 minutes away. What? Uh, Ren- Renee, like. <laughs> Thank God it wasn't this day and age with these gas prices. Shit. You listen. I drove an Acura TSX at that time, a straight six. He did not know how to drive stick shift. So it was just me. It was six hours and like 25 minutes because I lived out in the boonies, North Carolina. (laughs) Honey, I learned learned a lesson that day. I tell you what. Oh my God. You probably on like, had like a printed out map quest. Like shit. Man, listen. No, like, you know, I had like, it was a souped up car. So I had like a GPS in in my car. Like I was, 
I was making a little money, you know? Yeah, I guess, you know what? I kind of forgot that that was a thing that there was like the plug-in GPSs or they were like in the car. Right. Yes, I, I yeah, omitted. Yeah, like I, we went and got it a little custom. So you like, you press it and then it opens up and there it goes or whatever. Yeah. So I yeah, we didn't go direction. straight from MapQuest right to the iPhone. There was, there was, right. the, there was a little You're something right. in between. You're right, yeah. <laughs> Man, I drove there and I'm like, I'm dressed down. Like I have my Marvin the Martian hat on. I'm in scrubs. Like Shout I'm, out I'm to looking. Marvin the Martian. Right right like I was like dude I was looking a hot mess but <laughs> I saw Cedric walk past because I'm already angry but he per- I perked me right on up I was like oh who is this man with that fat ass like he's <laughs> booty <laughs> like I love he's stacked booty. I in the back Cedric is, is stacked in the back he is I love <laughs> I love booty in general I don't care who it's on I'm like that's a nice butt like <laughs> so I saw him and I was like I got to talk to this man. And then I looked at what I was wearing. And I was like, damn you, Robin. <laughs> I was like, come here, Robin. And he told me everything about him. And uh, I was like, you know what? Bump it. So I stole his number out of uh, Robin's phone. And I walked right up to Cedric and I introduced myself. And then I punched him in the chest. Uh, very As like- one does. Yeah, it's very like kids, you know, school, grade school type of thing, because I just like to try stuff out just to see if it works, because uh-huh. uh, confidence was just through the roof. <laughs> so I punched him, and he ended up liking it. <laughs> Great. I, just, I felt like I just knew. I just knew he ended up liking it. So I would go back to other shows and everything, and <laughs> he'll never let me live this down. Like, he was talking to somebody. They weren't dating. Let's just be clear. They were not. <laughs> dating was still fair game everybody it Calm was still down. fair game so they, they were they were you know talking or whatever and I ended up like telling him to walk me out to my car like at this second show and ended up giving him a kiss and I was like you're gonna come Ooh. and see me one day right and then I look over the shoulder and homegirl is just staring and looking I was like oh you know what if you had this man, like you thought you did, uh, you should have been over here, like snatching him back, but you did it. So, like, <laughs> so he ended up driving like back from an ROH show. And this is how I knew that it was real. He drew, he like, he drove from Charlotte to Baltimore for an ROH show. And yeah. then from Baltimore down to Goldsboro, North Carolina, and, which is, and I was like, oh, okay. So he, no, I'm sorry, excuse me. He drove from Baltimore back home because he had to do something for his mom and drop his stuff off. It's a good and man then he right got there. back in the car that same day he got back, drove three hours to come see me. And then like, it just, it was magic. I was like, okay. I think I love you. I was like, I think this is gonna be a little bit more. Because at first, you know, I was just like, oh, I'm just thinking this is just going to be a fling. That's what I was mm-hmm. looking for at the time. <laughs> mm-hmm. And and it was just like, all right. We just had a moment where we looked at each other and it was like, I think this is a little bit more. <laughs> and what kind of sealed it is that I chose, I told him to choose a, a movie for us to watch like the next day. And I have like hella movies. And he picked The Five Heartbeats, which is my favorite movie of I all time. I don't know The Five Heartbeats. What is that? Listen, it's a, it's a film by Robert Townsend. And it's like a parody of The Temptations, basically. Okay. So like you, fo- you follow this, like this, uh, this group and um, their, their woes and, you know, highs and lows and stuff of being signed and everything and going out and singing and everything. It's just a heartfelt classic. Oh, from Robert Townsend. I don't know yes. that one. Okay. Oh man, I used to watch it all the time when I was like three. Shouldn't have been watching. When I was three, but I was quoting it and watching it, and it's been my favorite ever since. And he picked that one out of hundreds. Damn. True and I love. just was like, true love. <laughs> okay, so now you're married, husband and wife. You've got your baby, but you mm-hmm. said earlier that the doctor said that you weren't supposed to have kids. What was yeah. that moment like of being like, oh my God, I'm pregnant. What? Like, what was that oh, like? I was so nervous because at the time, like I was like, we cannot afford a child. That's really what went through my, my head. I was like, we cannot afford a kid. And I found out I was pregnant and I came out with that test, Renee. And I was like, I don't know what Cedric's about to do. We have our little two bedroom, two bath apartment in Charlotte. I showed him the thing, the test. 
He went straight for the Ciroc. And, like, he downed it. Like, the whole bottle. And just went out in the balcony and just, like, he just get, had a good cry. No. He came back in, drunk as hell, and he's like, you gotta feed my baby in there. Like, turned into, like, this mushy person. Like, he ended up passing out on the floor. I had to pick him up. Luckily, I was, like, still strong. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> right. That's still last. Don't, don't lift anything over 20 pounds. Okay. Right, yeah. That was gonna, uh-huh. yeah, No, I was lifting his behind up, and this was, like, big set. So, yeah. like, I was, <laughs> I was heaving and hoeing. But it was, it was interesting. It was an interesting night. But it was definitely comical. He had me rolling the entire so night. Funny. And I was honestly, I just like, I thank God because I was like, you know what? Doctor said this, but I know you have the final say so. And obviously <laughs> they're wrong yeah. because here I am pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> Not knowing what to do. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, what a shock. It's such a crazy, like, I mean, John and I, we were trying when we when I got pregnant with Nora, but um, yeah, I mean, that was even then, because like I kept getting no, 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 that I was like, this is simply not happening. Was like mm. about to start IVF, had it at the house. And then like we were sitting on the couch and I went to go make a cocktail. And I'm like, let me just check really quick before I get into this little drinky poo here. And then I was mm-hmm. like, wait, what? As soon as it like turned positive and John passed me in the kitchen, I like had it on the kitchen counter. I was like, I'm just going to wait and see, like, wait for it to switch over. As soon as he walked in the kitchen, it switched over and said positive. And I was like, I shoved it in his face. And he was like, what? He actually, he didn't even say anything. We had a Walgreens across the street from us. So he like ran to the Walgreens, bought like seven more pregnancy tests. Yeah, it was. Uh, he was like, I so got cool. to make sure. Yeah, I know. Let's make sure. Because there has been a lot sure. of negatives until mm-hmm. now. But yeah, it's so crazy. It's yeah, true. no, I, I knew it was going to happen. Like, I was like, like. <laughs> Yeah. I, I remember because I was in the hospital the second time and you know you go through your stages and I got to the stage of like god get me out of here and out <laughs> x y and z <laughs> uh-huh I was bargaining up a storm and I said I would name my firstborn after Queen Esther because I would I would read that that book of the bible like over and over again for the like okay. the second bout of like Crohn's and I was like I'm naming after I'm naming after her and her Hebrew name was Odessa oh. and so I, I should have known it was a girl <laughs> and mm-hmm. so uh, I was like, I was like, well, I'm pregnant, and I, I was like, I already know her name. Perfect. I was like, I, I, was like, I have promised this a long time ago. This has nothing to do with you, Cedric. I was like, we can discuss the middle name. I was like, but that first name has to be this. And it was just, it was so like divine because like the the important date in Queen Esther's life when she like helped the Jews was December thirteenth. And that was also AJ's birthday. So oh, I was like, wow. <laughs> I was like, okay. That's crazy. What's right. the day? I was like, oh, what's, I'm sorry. John, what's oh, the, Johnson. Oh, oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 Johnson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so you were recently just at the WWE Hall of Fame. You were there. You got to mm-hmm. see Queen Charmel go in. Yes. Uh, you got to see the Steiner brothers. You got to mm-hmm. see the Undertaker, Vader. Love- what was that like for you? I mean, after going through the experience that you had to then like being backstage at WWE, being there with Cedric, just getting to go mm-hmm. be around that whole WrestleMania week. Um, how was, how was that for you? Was that like a bit of like a mind? F- what happened? It, no, it's, it's great. I look forward to this weekend every single year. Yeah, it best. is like a time where I can just be a little socialite. I'll have mm-hmm. one booking and <laughs> that's it. But <laughs> yeah it was it was wonderful being around like my friends like I know a lot of people there and everything so it's just wonderful to see them again like I think Rhea and I hugged for like five minutes <laughs> <laughs> I was just like I just sat there and we just like talked and everything so it was just yeah. wonderful and especially seeing the Undertaker like oh my god you grow up around wrestling and you're just like everybody knows the Undertaker like eat my mom knows the Undertaker and she's like she only knows a couple people mm-hmm. Undertaker, Stone Cold, Macho Man, you know John Cena, The Rock like she, yeah you know the Triple A she knows these people but seeing uh, him get inducted I was just like this is amazing like if I would have told my eight-year-old self my 10-year-old self five-year-old would have like hey guess what girl guess what you get to do yeah <laughs> 
I know, I'm not gonna lie. I was having you. like a bit of FOMO that I was like, damn it, how am I not there? I'm missing all of this. Like it just <laughs> looked like it was the absolute best time ever. Oh, it was it was wonderful. It was especially just to get dressed up and nice, you know, and yeah. I didn't know, but apparently the, the color was emerald green for the night. Was it ever? <laughs> Wait, who all had I know you had it? Lita had it. Lita had it, Trish had it. Uh, Sasha had it. Uh, Charlotte had some emerald green in there. Like I was like, oh, it was the move. Did I did I get the memo? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like oh, excuse me. And I was like, I was just doing it because these are our wedding colors and our anniversary is coming up. <laughs> so funny. You have lived like such a big life. You've done mm-hmm. so many things. I mean, just from like the things that you have been through uh, emotionally, physically to, you know, having this wrestling career. But even before that, I mean, being in the Air Force, like what was, what was that like? How did that set you up for like wrestling life? It taught me to be in a man's world. Uh, Military is a man's world. I know some people probably won't like me saying that, but it is, especially in my field. I was a fire truck mechanic. Yeah, That was a man's like arena. (laughs) <laughs> I bet. except for when you needed somebody small to get into a, a bay door or take out a deuce and a half and I'm the only person that could fit in between uh-huh. those wrenches and stuff yeah, yeah. but it taught me to navigate in those waters because usually I'm just you know I was like whatever I'm, you know young spirited person but you get in there and you have structure so it, it very is much it taught me a lot of structure because I used to be like a ticker bouncing off the walls so it, yeah. it taught me how to handle structure and how to handle uh authoritative figures mm-hmm. you know especially those who like to I don't want to say abuse their powers but they like you know swing <laughs> their like dick a little them. bit yeah. right yeah, yeah they like to use them a lot <laughs> yeah yeah so I know I can ha- like okay so it taught you how to deal with that which I've always kind of struggled with that as well where I'm like I can be so combative when it comes to things like that I'm like can I just like strike a balance here a little bit? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do find it kind of hard to deal with that. What's like your tool? Oh, I love, I feel statements. Mm. That's my best. Like, you can't get mad at how I feel. I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, I feel like this thing. <laughs> and I'll give yeah. my, my input in a very nicer way. Uh, they try not to be uh, abrasive, but assertive. 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 That's the buzzword right there. Yes. That's the yes, one. and plus I do yeah. things with a smile until like until it changes, and then people know like, oh, okay, she's not she's not playing right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Like you know, Mama Mo comes in or Auntie Swole, whatever like they like to call me. <laughs> like it changes, and I'm like, oh, I know you're not talking to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that it was um Auntie Swole that stepped in when Emilio claimed that he wanted to shave his beard, and you said, hell yes. no. Yeah, I yeah. said hell and I was like, put a stop to that right now. I was like, I will crack that belt over that hind part. Don't don't do this to yourself. Emilio, like, do you have a do you have a rebuttal to this? Do, is there anything you would like to add to this conversation? <laughs> you you good, good sugar. Listen to your elders. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, I love it. Um, okay, before we wrap up here, I want to talk to you about your music because that's also another thing that you dabble in. What are you mm-hmm. working on? What are your influences? What are you listening to? I want like the whole deal. I want the deets, the deets. Give me the deets. <laughs> uh, well, I am working on my album. I'm finally putting together a nice little EP uh, for the people. It's going to have a very, like, I'm a, you know, I'm a 90s kid. So it's going to be a very 90s aesthetic. So Hell side yeah. A, side B, mm. it's going to have different vibes, you know. Um, I really like listening to, like, Neo Soul and, yeah. like, Van, Van Jess and uh, Lucky Day and, uh, like, Jasmine Sullivan. Like, I love, I love listening to people like that. But also, <laughs> I guess depending on what mood I'm in, I like Megan Thee Stallion. I like Doja Cat. You know, I like I like uh, Ari Lennox. I can listen to those people or rap like Jay Z, Nas, uh, Kanye. You know, when he acting right, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which these days is far and few between. Like, yeah, I'd be like, bro, uh, 
handle yourself. Oh my God. I know. Uh, Poor guys. Yes. I, Poor, know. I know, right? Oh man. But uh I, yeah, I'm uh Carly Bravo. I listen to I listen to a lot of him because I like the I like the vibe that he, he has. Uh, it has a certain aesthetic that I, I just like to get down to, especially like the, you know, workout too. So I'm definitely going to have him on the album, uh, you know, talking to Swerve and Montezzi. Mm-hmm. Of course, you know, Rich Lotta has produced a lot of my different tracks. He produced my new track that I'm coming out to, the Swole World gimmick, the new theme song. Uh, who else am I working with? What was it like working with it. Swerve? Because you were featured on his album as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's just amazing. That's my brother. Like that's we go back like full flats on the Cadillac or like a Cadillac mm. full flats like that's that's my ace spoon coon like he's <laughs> he's my ride or die. <laughs> uh, it was ah, just seeing him in the moment, seeing him evolve from like this person mm-hmm. that didn't rap to now he's just like coming off the dome. His flow is sick. It's just nice and everything like that. Like it was just great for him to have that trust in me for his first album, for their first you know collab album. And just like, sis, I, I got this track and I need your voice on it. Cause like, I'm not a traditional singer in a sense, you know, I'm not like hitting those falsettos. I mean, I can or whatever, but I like sultry sounds. Yeah. I like using my vibrato a lot. And uh, you wanna put just, a little purr on it. Yeah, just a little, just a little something on it, you know, a little, little, little Ella or a little Dorsey Dandridge, if you will, <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, something something a little old. Like I like to intertwine different things and listen to a lot of old stuff that I guess it kind of just brought it into yeah. that thing. And he trusted me enough to like come up with the hook on my own and everything. He didn't want to like crowd my process. Uh, even allowed me to write some things for different uh, different lyrics for different like songs and stuff like that, just to kind of get the wheels turning. Oh, I love that's so cool. So when when's your um, EP going to be coming out? I don't know. I'm just not not rushing it. I just want to, yeah. I just want to flow. Let let it marinate. Mm-hmm. Um, in and out of the studio as of late. Just I uh, putting the tracks down. Uh, I like to have a plethora and then narrow them down. Yeah. Into my final my final eight, and then do like video packages, of course, for them because yeah, I, they don't do music videos anymore. And I think that that should come back. It was so dope. Like, also, like, was anything cooler than? I mean, for me when Beyonce did, it was off Beyonce, no, Lemonade before Beyonce, right? Or was it the other way? Do I have the back? Uh, the Beyonce is self, self-titled with, and then Lemonade. Yes, but either but either way, for both of them, when she had like the whole video, like films that went yes. with the whole thing was like, uh, oh I was, my I, I was living, living for that Beyonce album. Like it came out as I, like on the day I gave birth. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> right. So it was, it was a glorious day all around for me, but like just watching her and watching like what she's done. I'm like, you're such a visionary and the people you have around you and how you're networking yeah. across to make this happen with people who are unknown to some people, sure. you know, and it's just, it, it's amazing. Like we God. should all aspire to be so creative and let our creative flow like that. For real. I know that used to be like my go-to have a couple glasses of wine. I'd be like, John, we've got, like, I made him watch that Beyonce. <laughs> like, I can't even tell you how many times and he's like, listen, I'm not complaining. If that's the thing that you want to put on and we're going to watch tonight, then hey, so mm-hmm. be it. Um, but man, yeah, I, I love that. And you're right. People just don't, people don't lean into the music fitting anymore. Or it's like, you know, there's nowhere really for them to live except for on Vimeo or right. Vimeo, the the money vimeo vivi vive whatever Vivo? whatever Vivo? it's like <laughs> Vivo, Vivo. Vivo. yeah that's what we're trying to get to right now vivo like, vivo vivo yes yeah, um it's yeah, funny because yeah. i was listening to um i really like casey musgraves a lot and i was like i'm just like introducing different music to my daughter so mm-hmm. i put it on youtube and i was like i've never even thought to look up these music videos and they do exist but that you just yeah. you don't really know because no, they're just not being released in the same way that they used right. to. Right. Unless you're on YouTube, then uh, there's no like TRL yeah. or 106 and Park yeah. for us to like, oh, here's the countdown of the top, you know, 10 music videos yeah. type thing. I'm like, all right, this, that back. That'd be nice. this is a this is a tough question that I have for you. Oh, you boy. get to listen to one 90s girl group for the rest of your life. What is it? Spice Girls. 
Oh, you didn't even hesitate. Oh, I don't need to hesitate. They, that, <laughs> they, they are my girls. <laughs> Talk about a good music video. They knew how to put the music videos together. Man, yes. Like I, I still pop in my Spice World VHS. Yes. I have it on like streaming services and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> but it's not it's, it's nostalgia to be like, look, tracking. Yes. And all right, AJ, let me uh -huh. show you this classic here. Look, doing the dance moves in the middle, in the middle oh of my like, living room. Shake it, live it, make it. Who do you think you are? Oh yes. my God. Uh, I was obsessed. I, I truly it. thought being a Spice Girl was my first career choice. Um, mm -hmm. And things fell through. Um, but that is, that's what I wanted to be. Yes. Like. But we're, we're still about girl power, equalization between the Yes, we Mwah. are. <laughs> girl power. Yeah, girl. they were just the best. Oh my gosh. Boy, who's yours? God. Um, does no doubt count? It does count. I mean, I mean, I, given that the boost was the 2000s, I would still consider them 90s because like, yeah, I like to listen like, to them in the nineties. Yeah, yeah. I like I, my gut knee jerk reaction is to say no doubt because for me Gwen Stefani is just so damn cool. Yeah. Love me some Gwen. She's but also, so I where was I? I? I was driving to Toronto recently and I listened to. Um, oh my god! Now I'm gonna forget. Let me look up the actual name of the album so that I don't get <laughs> <it> up. <laughs> um hold on everyone bear with me we can edit this part out da, da, da. List, oh very necessary obviously duh i was listening to salt and pepper very necessary oh it's yeah like, yeah it's so funny the way like i was so obsessed with that album that when i still put it on i know every little verse i know every word i know where every little thing no is skips. dropping in no skips but it's so funny the way that like I almost wish it like there's things that you could delete out of your brain to make room for new things. Cause I'm like, do I need yeah. to know every little bit of very necessary at this point? I mean, I don't know. That, that's how I am up. about take your man. Like as soon as it comes on, I'm like, if you mess with me, I'll take your man. <laughs> <laughs> I love the good throwbacks. They just yeah. feel salt, good. Salt and pepper is amazing. My mom said that's the, one of the first like their songs was the first song that like I was moving to was push yeah. it because she was still in the clubs with my dad, like <laughs> doing the dance and everything. So yeah, <laughs> so I saw them in concert one time. It was like old school, like very oh old school. God. So Dougie Fresh was there, Naughty by Nature was there, Houdini. It was a night. Ah, oh, and it was oh great because like, we got invited backstage. It was great to meet them and stuff. It was just one of the one of the best concerts I've I've been to was there was theirs, and of course, well, no doubt had it put on a good concert yes. and Paramore open for them I, I saw that tour too yeah that yes. was so lit oh, oh my god I was yeah. so excited to see Paramore open yeah. for no doubt like what a passing right. of the torch right oh it, Thing of man I, I lived and and when they said they weren't doing misery business anymore I was like at least I got to see it <laughs> I got to hear it well, I got to experience it right you talk so about somebody good. having a headache from jumping the whole entire time, <laughs> man. Uh. That was a really great concert. Like I, mm -hmm. I actually was just like transported back to like where my seats were, how I could right. see the stage. <laughs> like I, I totally just, yeah, my memory entirely just jogged back there. Yeah. So good. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And of course it would be remiss for me to not ask you about your relationship with AEW now and what all went down there. Well, that was I mean, like a total I, swerve. Yeah, we were just on such a like, high with all of that other shit. To be like, hey, by the way, can we end on this downer really quick? Like, <laughs> it's not really a downer for me. I mean, because like I still like I still have love for the people there at AW. Like I still have friends and everything like that. I'm supportive. Like I still watch their matches and everything. Mm -hmm. Like everything that went down kind of just went as a surprise for me. Yeah, uh, I didn't necessarily know he was going to react like that, but. I mean, that's just his God given right, you know, choice. I thought we was cool, you know, but like my line is still open, like for TK for AEW, because I don't like the burning your bridges. I just like to tell the truth. Like, yeah, these are my opinions, these are my experiences. And they sh I feel like they shouldn't have uh been blown out of proportion as much as they have. And I feel like 
people were doing more in validating than actually actively listening and comprehending what I was saying. So uh, in a sense of where like my relationship with certain fans, it's kind of like, ah, <laughs> right, right. but uh as far as AEW like I just I really wish them the best because I don't want anybody getting out of a, the job competition is yeah. amazing for wrestling we've been yeah. waiting for something like this for a very long time like this is great They're like I feel like if <laughs> I feel like especially in this business but especially in in the world but especially with these folks if you even if everybody just puts down the knives and pick up a fork everybody can eat like yeah. there's places for people to eat everywhere, but if people are so busy trying to be like, oh, this is my slice. This, you know, this is mine. This is mine. And like a lot of pointing and back and forth and like, oh, it's a war. It's this, this, this. No, it's just this competition. It's just a place yeah. where people can eat and a place where you can put food on your table, mm -hmm. a place where you can actually have some pride. You know, like I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of like people dragging each one. Like yeah. you won't, you won't hear me say like, like, oh, I wish that this company would go to, to crap or like the different comments that people have been saying about people working with WWE versus people working with AEW. I'm like, sure. you guys just chill. Yeah. We're just here yeah. to watch wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are in too deep. Yeah. Like, like, I, what, but, like, how is that for you? I mean, just sort of seeing like the, the fan reactions to like people are either all pro WWE or they're pro AEW and they're, it's kind of hard to find that in between balance, it almost seems. Yeah, it's it's crazy to me because behind that whole wall, you have a whole bunch of wrestlers who talk to each other. Yeah, yeah. So, a whole bunch of friends who are like laughing at the whole situation. Like, all right, this is a little too much. Yeah. You know, like you guys yeah. are doing a little too much. <laughs> like, I don't like, I don't care. Like you're pro WWE, great. You like to watch that. Like, just because I'm pro Hawaiian punch don't mean I don't like high C. It's a different, <laughs> yeah. different, different taste. Right. What is juice? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it either way. Right. I'll, I'll take it. it. I'm like, I don't like, I'm like, it's just, it's just wrestling. I'm just trying to see my friends succeed. Yeah. And I feel like fans, if you are a true fan of wrestling, you should want the wrestlers to succeed mm -hmm. wherever yeah. they're at. Um, during the pandemic, it was a lot of you and Britt really holding things down. What was that time yeah. like for uh, for you guys to be, yeah, I mean, just really in the oh, thick man. of things the way that you were? It was stressful uh, because you have so much riding on your back. And it was like, it, it was stressful, but also fun to like <laughs> be that person like, hey, I'm introducing this this division with you know with Brit to the rest of the world you know yeah. this is a whole new company and I was just like this is this is amazing to have this storyline like when they approached me and asked me who I wanted to be in a storyline with I literally was like I don't not nothing against the rest of the women that were on the locker room but I just felt like uh, our banter yeah. would be so oh my great. god yeah that's what 100%. it was because like we would talk regularly and text each other and be like hey hey girl da, 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 da. like we call ourselves the Bellas <laughs> I sure there's a whole bunch of people out there that probably like call it like you know your friend Bella or whatever but like yeah we, we do the dance and everything like oh it was my just like God. yeah bro yo we were a mess backstage like girl you, like, you know look, like you look, you can't dance. Dance. <laughs> <laughs> Paige we and I we used to do that too Paige but, and I would right also like it was just down. fun to do like, yeah oh yeah definitely so I knew that we would bounce off each other and it would be good chemistry and that's what I was I was like look we need good tv like mm -hmm. our matches, you know, it'd be fine. We have the people that's going to work with us and stuff like that. I was like, but we need good TV. We need something that's going to hold people captive. And with me, I love comedy. I love, you know, have a little action in between there, get a little persona in there. And mm -hmm. it just, just kind of worked. Yeah. Yeah, like, it was, absolutely. It, was, it just worked. So what is, what's going to be next? What shows do you have coming up? What are some of the things that you want to be on? What's, what's the, mm. what's the deal? Well, I have Battle Club, so I'm still Icon's champion. I have Battle Club in New York on mm -hmm. uh, April 20th. So next week, I'm facing Trish Dore. Uh, so that's going to be fun because she's yeah. one of my favorite opponents. Um, I have May 13th, I'm going to be in Wrestle Lab at Showabunga. So I'm Show wrestling Abunga. Grim. Showabunga. So I'm wrestling mm -hmm. Grim. Uh, okay. <laughs> and that, and Mr. Excuse me, Mr. Grim in that show. Um, <laughs> 
And then I, well, I can't tell you who my opponent is, but I do have another one in June. Uh, I'm not just kind of like not I'm stretching myself thin in a sense. I'm just like yeah. letting, letting my body really heal uh, after, you know, all this. Cause it's just, like I said, it's been a time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but no yeah, um, I'm actually looking forward to kind of wrestling the, the people that just have like just been recently released and stuff like that. Yeah. Wrestling some of, my, some of my friends that I haven't been able to get into, inside of a ring with like Nixon mm-hmm. Newell. Like I would love to, you know, have a little bout with her, Athena. Yeah. I missed Athena because she was on her way out as I was coming up and I was like, dang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you can finally hook up with some people that uh, have become right. available. Exactly. I want to wrestle uh, Janai Kai. Mm-hmm. Yes, because um, I remember like helping her train way back when and just seeing her growth so far. I'm like, oh, I'm proud. So yeah, <laughs> uh, definitely. Proud like Auntie her. Swole. Proud Auntie Swole. <laughs> well, I'm so happy that we got to do this again, that uh, the audio has not been blown up by a crying baby. Uh, and I feel like we could... Uh, really have some cool conversations, but happy to see that you are just like glowing. You seem like you're in a really great place right now. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see where you're going to pop up next. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, girl.